And Congress should pass measures to ensure that foreign enemy combatants are treated as such. These are enemies, these are combatants, and we have to be tough and we have to be strong. Hillary Clinton is a weak and ineffective person, and I will tell you, if you choose Donald Trump, these problems are going to go away far, far greater than anybody would think, believe me. She is a weak and ineffective person. Just remember that Hillary Clinton and they are looking, oh, they want her so badly. Now, let me just tell you, she is not the right person to solve a problem that largely her and, Ob and Ob Obama gave us. That Obama gave us. It disqualifies her from being a credible presidential candidate, in my opinion. What do I know, in my opinion? Does everybody agree with me or not? To lead it. That's why, even if I weren't in this race, I'd be doing everything I could to make sure Donald Trump never becomes president because I believe he will take our country down a truly dangerous path. Unlike him, I have some experience with the tough calls and the hard work of statecraft. I wrestled with the Chinese over a climate deal in Copenhagen, brokered a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, negotiated the reduction of nuclear weapons with Russia, twisted arms to bring the world together in global sanctions against Iran, and stood up for the rights of women, religious minorities, and LGBT people around the world. We cannot put the lives of our young men and women in uniform in Donald Trump's hands. Now, six, we need to stay true to our values. Trump says over and over again, the world is laughing at us. He's been saying this for decades. He didn't just start this year. He bought full-page ads in newspapers across America back in 1987 when Ronald Reagan was president, saying that America lacked a backbone and the world was, you guessed it, laughing at us. He was wrong then and he's wrong now. And you've got to wonder why somebody who fundamentally has so little confidence in America and has felt that way for at least 30 years wants to be our president. I think this is the core challenge of America, is that beyond the words is a real question of policy and a real question of values and a real question of seriousness. The real question of policy. We don't always see eye to eye, do we, Newt? No, but we do agree our country must take action to address climate change. Newt Gingrich has been on both sides of a long list of issues, sometimes in the same week. I don't think right-wing social engineering is any more desirable than left-wing social engineering. With allies like that, who needs the left? It cuts Paul Ryan off at the knees. It supports the Obama administration. There is no explanation for it. And a real question of value. A question of value. If you want to put people in jail, let's look at the politicians who created the environment, the politicians who profited from the environment, politicians who profited from the environment. Newt Gingrich on the defense for taking one and a half million bucks. After he left Congress, Freddie Mac paid Gingrich at least $1.6 million. $1.6 million, some of it just before the housing market collapsed. Newt Gingrich can ridicule Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac publicly while privately pocketing millions. That's hardcore lobbying, and that's what Newt Gingrich was doing. The politicians who profited from the environment. There are now reports about controversial ties to the healthcare industry. The think tank founded by Newt Gingrich collected at least 
37 million dollars from major health care companies and the group supports individual mandates. Newt Gingrich renewed his support for an individual mandate, a key tenet of President Obama's health care law. The support for an individual mandate? Folks, don't ask me to explain this. And a real question of seriousness, serious question of seriousness. Everything that Gingrich railed against when he was in the House, he went the other way when he got paid to go the other way. You're an embarrassment to our party. He's flipped and flopped based on who's paying him. He's demonstrating himself to be the very essence of the Washington insiders. It's about serial hypocrisy. It's wrong to go around and adopt radically different positions. Because then people have to ask themselves, what will you tell me next time? So, you know, adversity doesn't always build character because, you know, that guy, Donald Trump, he's in the news a lot. He gets a ton and ton of ridicule and attacks from other people, and he has not changed his character, good or bad, through all that adversity. This here book. And according to this book, the Civil Rights Movement had a lot of adversity, and it built the character of the Civil Rights Movement. So adversity does lead to character. And how would you know about diversity leading to character? Because you've never struggled throughout your entire life. Yeah, well, what about that scandal about your mom last year? That was pretty bad, right? Oh, look, look, why are you, why are you bringing my mom into this, man? My mom, my mom is the strongest woman I know.